Bright Night is a talk show with published authors, writers, and content creators discussing both the creative and technical sides of writing, as well as the industry surrounding it, from novels to screenplays to comics and more. And now, here's your host, author Travis I. Sivart. Good evening to all you beautiful people. Thank you for joining us here in beautiful... I don't know, it's dark outside. I don't know where I am. I'm uh, I'm Travis Sivart, incredible author of many incredible series, but not The Incredibles. And uh, I got a cool glass. Check that out. Cool glass with the uh, T on it. So it's for Travis Tavern Talk. Um, It's going to be Aaron for that command. The, the initials of the show and then cast because I have three yeah. different shows which by the way let me do this real quick tonight's topic that we're going to talk about in this podcast is uh, writer support so this is a broad spectrum thing and it's going to cover how we seek out help from others or support besides our immediate family this is writers looking for writers or other creative people to interact with and we'll get more to that a little bit first i want to let you know this is a uh, right night here on travis tavern talk on twitch tv so if you want to join us live you can find us at twitch.tv slash travis tavern talk every saturday night at eight we broadcast and record our live podcast with a live audience who is chatting with us so for those of you listening to podcast We might be talking to some folks here who are asking questions or throwing in their opinions and bringing their information in it. You'll hear this noise if I specifically need to uh, stop whatever we're doing so we can respond to something in chat. For those of you in chat, we are recording a podcast, which means it is subscriber only. So if you're a subscriber, you're a part of this. And if you're not, we still appreciate you hanging out with us. Um, Now, anybody who does chat, we may not respond to everything because we want to make sure it's related to the topic and the show that we're doing at the moment. Other than that, we're an adult channel. We use adult language. Adult jokes. Adult humor. It happens. So, if that's not your thing, we kindly ask you to uh, keep it in mind for the show if you're going to hang out. Okay, and I already said I'm Travis. I got this. Let's introduce these other gentlemen. Let's start in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Aaron, who are you? Why are you in my house? <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Aaron Kennedy. That's A A R O N. Uh, last name Kennedy, just like the dead president. Uh, author of uh, Persona Non Grata, first of the Ships of Valor series. Currently working on uh, the Icarus Black series, set in the same uh, universe. Um, been a technical writer for coming on 25 years. Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. And my name is Michael Thompson. I am an independent author and illustrator. Uh, one of my books is World of the Orb, Portal Fantasy, Adventure, uh, Modern Teens Lost in a Medieval World, Trying to Find Their Way Back to Earth Across Strange Lands, Battling Strange Creatures, and One uh, Tyrannical Warlock Bent on Conquering the Realms. Very fun, fun adventure. Check it out on michaelthompsonbooks.com. Along with my other stuff, that's M I C H A E L T H O M P S O N books.com. And for those of you in chat, you can see links for all three of us up there. And don't forget, you can find my books for those on the podcast at bit.ly slash Travis Books. That's B I T dot L Y slash Travis Books. And you can find Aaron's books at bit.ly slash Aaron Kennedy, B I T dot L Y slash A A R O N Kennedy, like the dead. He always uses plural. Presidents. I think he knows something we don't. No, no, president. Oh, do you? Is that singular? By the way, mm-hmm. something I've referred to, and this is totally merchandising and pimping. Today, while writing, I did almost eight hours of writing on live stream today, and I referred to 27 Thoughts on Writing multiple times. So this is a super thin book for those of you that are interested in the creative process these are my recommendations, and it covers anywhere from creative to the technical of what Aaron will harp on at some point in time during every episode. This is a business. So it's short, it's sweet, it's to the point. There's not a lot of fat. It's pretty lean. Okay, let's set that aside here, and uh, don't forget merchandising. And what we want to know 
from our viewers and our listeners, what are you reading or writing? What word project are you playing with? Or what creative project if you don't write? You're welcome to send us an email at Write Night Show. That's Write, W R I T E, Night, N I G H T, show at gmail.com, Write Night Show at gmail.com. Or if you're here live, put it in chat. Um, other than that, don't forget to check out our other podcasts on, and by the way, all of the podcasts are on a bunch of places like iHeartRadio, Apple, Google, Spotify, and more. But Talk of the Tavern, which we do live Monday nights, has just been accepted to Pandora. So it's now available Woo. in Pandora. And even in this one day since I've discovered, that, since I get notification, I have seen a bump in the statistics, and I'm thrilled. Ah, I'm super awesome. excited. Thank you. Okay, so the topic, writer support. As I was saying before, I want to talk about... As we've gone through our journey of writing, there's times you just want to talk to somebody about writing. Now, we have our friends and family that are close to us who don't necessarily do this sort of thing. And they listen. They're very nice. They're super supportive. And we adore them. But there's times you just want to talk to somebody that's doing the same thing. People who are going through the same process. You want to help others because you've learned things and you're excited to share it, or you just want somebody to say, hey, I've been there. You're going to get through this. And you also want people to tell you what you're doing wrong. Because, frankly, three years from now, you go, boy, they were right. I should have listened to them. (laughs) (laughs) I know I've experienced that. So what about you, Michael? Uh, I love everything you said there. Uh, And... I love your something face. Something that's great just <laughs> I'm back at you. <laughs> uh something that's <laughs> something that um it, being an author is kind of an isolating job, so when you do get to meet other people who do what you do and uh and create like a support network, that's a really amazing thing. Um I remember uh the first convention I ever went to, I met Travis. And was that uh, your first I had one? done like that was my first ever convention. I had done oh. uh, when I was uh, before that. I had just done book signings. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I got you. This is the love episode. Um, and uh, and and Travis was super cool. And I met. I also met Tara and uh, and and Mo and uh, lots of lots of people who have been on the show in past episodes. And, um, it was really cool. And I remember thinking, like at that moment, my uh, my world as an author sort of like bloomed and evolved into uh, less of an isolated thing and more of a place where I have colleagues, where I feel like I have co-workers because um, uh, as an author where you're kind of, you're doing all these different things yourself, especially as an independent author where you wear so many hats, um, it is so cool to get to meet people uh, who have done what you do or are doing other things that you can learn about. Um, Yeah. And Lots of people ask, you know, how do you how do you build that sort of network? Well, you know, you watch shows like this, haha, the best ever. Um, you <laughs> Hold on. go to conventions, and just the more you do, the more things happen. That's what I say. Just the more you do to nourish um, uh, your passions, uh, you'll you'll naturally sort of uh, magnetize other people who have similar interests as you. I think that's a great outlook. I like what you said there. Yeah. So, uh... What do you think, Aaron? Well, uh, on that, freaking one of the cool things about this community is we don't really have rivals or competitors or anything like that. Books we shouldn't at least. Don't have a well, mm. right? Uh, because there's no upper end of consumption. It's not like you're going to overdose on books like you will with heroin. Uh, That's why I limit my heroin. <laughs> uh, well, no, I mean, oh, I've read Michael's book. Oh, therefore I cannot read Aaron's book or read. Travis's books. No, no, no. Uh, I can still read all those things. The the worst thing that can happen is I run out of a little bit of time, and now I have to wait until next month to do that. Mm -hmm. But when it really boils down to it, you can't produce it fast enough for me not to be able to read the next person's stuff. Nobody's churning them out that fast. Um, So there's always a new book out there. Uh, so we're diving into the classics to to find we're 
the reader is always looking for more. Um, they're always looking for the ne the next artist to find something else, the newest creator. Um, that's the big thing. To add on to what you're saying Travis? or build on that, um, yeah, we'll never be able to produce as quick as somebody reads. It's just physically impossible to match your audience's appetite. So right. to refer to other writers, to appreciate other writers, to not feel competitive with them, unless it's to increase your own skill set, is just common sense. Now, the only time a reader may have to choose is if they only have 20 bucks in their pocket and they can only buy one book. But next month, and again, by the way, quick tangent, I have picked up two authors in the past year that I really really like and one of them has eight books out and one of them has like 12 or 15 books out and i am so excited because i know it will take me this much time to go through those 25 books or whatever and by the time i'm done they'll have the next one out so i'm thrilled yeah, that's, that's good right but when it really boils down to it we've got public libraries which those books have been paid for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm just as happy to get a check from the library as I am from a reader. For sure. Fair point. And um, we could mention audiobooks is where I get a lot of my reading time done. Which, by the way, let me say this. If you are any kind of new author that says, I don't like to read because I don't want to steal people's ideas, let me tell you now in the most harsh way I possibly can, don't be stupid. <laughs> okay. Um, I will point out that The Lion King is Hamlet Bug's Life is The Seven Samurai um, but You don't have a new idea that, You have a new spin on a new idea But besides all that If you're a new writer You are only going to learn By observing And practicing And if you were an architect That says well I'm going to go to school, but I'm never going to look at another building because I don't want to steal an idea. If you're a painter saying, I'm never going to look at somebody else's work of art or a sunset because I don't want to steal an idea, it's ridiculous. Um, please read other... Michael? Uh, uh, after you're done, yeah. No, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm rambling. Uh, all right. Uh, we, I, when, we, when I was in... Um... When I was in a creative writing class, we had, we had a term for it, and we called it a reading like a writer. And so when we, when we would have reading portions of the class, it would be like identifying, you know, what did you really like about it and why do you think it works? And I think when you have that writer mind, um, inevitably it, it, will, it will adjust how you uh, look at a work, uh, unless, unless you kind of like switch it off and just turn your brain off and enjoy. Um, but usually there's like like this sort of a, a background effect of uh, analysis that you have and and being being that we are writers i definitely like i mean one of my when when i when i'm reading a book and i discover a new tasty word i'll be like oh yes and then i'll pull out my journal and i'll be like look up you know what this means i am and so torn i'm, I'm basically collecting when collecting get, colors to paint with when i get readers who like i had to look up multiple words in your book and i don't feel like i'm mm. writing wordy on one hand mm -hmm. i'm like uh oh on the other hand i love it when i get a new word when i'm reading i love to learn that new turn of phrase andrea was reading portals book one and i referred to a thug as a tough which is something i got from comic books marvel mm -hmm. used to refer to the street level thugs as toughs and I actually got it more from the role-playing game than the comics itself. But she learned a new way to use that word. And it's not a bad thing. Because it's not like I use something with five syllables that somebody went, stop trying to look smart. Um, but my thoughts well, on this topic. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Aaron. Well, no, no. This goes back to, uh, and I, you keyed in on an episode of Growing Pains of all things. Uh, <laughs> and Freaking hell, hell if I can remember the daughter's name, but she interviewed for the school paper. She wrote an article. But the, my takeaway from this was the editor yells at her for using these big words. 
And he goes, if you, if you, what does this word mean? It means a sticky mess. Then call it a sticky mess. <laughs> and then she gets the job, and he goes, well, why, did I, why did I get the job if I wrote a bad article? Because you knew how to spell. You're the only, <laughs> I can't get anybody here that knows how to spell. At least you <laughs> did. I can teach you. Here's my rule that I've actually just come to in the past week or two as these people are giving me this information. If you're going to keep your narration pretty simple, keep your character dialogue complex. That's where you use your big words. Not in your narration, but if a character is wordy and trying to look brainy, it's a character nuance now. But if you're doing it in your narration, now you're just kind of being a dick. Um, I want to read a comment here from Tajinter. When I'm reading a book, I tend to ask how I would respond or my characters would react to the situation. It helps me flesh out the characters. This is something ah. I do when watching movies. Um, the more I write, the more I will. Now, first and foremost, I always approach a movie as, shh, relax, enjoy the show. But the second time I watch it, I look to pick it apart. Now, if it's so jarring mm -hmm. the first time, then I will start to pick it apart because reasons. Um, you could call that out loud, Aaron. Aaron is some back-channel messages of sliding off topic. But uh, I yeah. still haven't even We're voiced. sliding off topic, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay to just call that shit out loud. But yeah, you're right. Let's <laughs> move it back to topic. Let me give my thoughts on this topic. I don't want to be a dick. It is your show, sir. Then we could tangent. <laughs> well, the thing is, every time you send me a message, somehow Discord has turned its noise back on, so everybody hears a bloop, bloop. <laughs> so I feel like I have to justify the noise. Look, okay. look. My thoughts. We were really pulling topic. the curtain back today. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix it in post. <laughs> we'll do it live. I'm getting back on topic. I'm talking. <laughs> on topic. For realsies. <laughs> Um, my, thought on this, my thought on this topic, gentlemen, is when I started self-publishing in 2013, I reached out to community. And I found in that seven years ago, Facebook had writer groups. And generally there was three kinds. One that was dead because somebody started it, somebody like me who wanted to talk to people, but is dead. Nobody goes in there. The second kind, mm. that's just advertisements for other people's books. Then the third kind was like a freaking unicorn. Mm. Really hard to find, kind of mythical, where people actually dove into... And by the way, this third type can easily bleed into a, a tangent group of read my stuff, read my stuff, read my stuff. But they never read oh, yeah. anybody else's. And that's hard, because mm. you want to talk about... All the things we talk about on this show, the things that I talk about when I'm streaming, the things I talk about when I call you guys all excited or just needing a little push to get myself going. And this is what, as a writer, I looked for. The group that was small enough and personal enough that they were bold enough to go, aw, that's horrible. Now quit whining and go back to work. And they understood it. Um... This is super hard to find in Facebook. And now you're not going to find it in any of these abbreviated social media, such as Twitter. Because it's so easy in less than 200 characters, not even words, to fall into just bickering. Or it's so dry, it's hard to read intent behind it. But I have found it very much in the streaming community. Now this can also go for YouTube with the writing community there. Um... So besides, Michael, you mentioned going to conventions, finding Tara and Mo and yourself and Tempe and Elizabeth and John Millington of Conquest Publishing and all these other folks that I can go to one-on-one, -on -one, in person, video chat, or any mo um, anything like that mm -hmm. has been a beautiful thing. But where do most people get to go? Especially if they're not published yet. And this is where I'm saying, oh, oh, you know what else? Before I cut, finish off with this thought, I'm going to say NaNoWriMo right now because we are in November. And we'll touch on that in a few minutes because I definitely want to give that some 
a little bit of hype because it's great, yeah. especially for those that aren't writing and publishing and doing all the things. If you're getting into it, this is an awesome thing. But here on Twitch, as I find other writing streams, as I find writing podcasts out there, um, which, by the way, Brandon Sanderson does an incredible podcast about writing. It's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, there's ways. But besides that, don't forget, as Aaron mentioned earlier, your local libraries. One of the people in chat, Tajinter, mentioned libraries are disappearing. Let's find a way to keep them around. Not just for books, but they are social hubs that we might not really realize what the use yeah. can be for them. But there are literal bulletin boards. Not a virtual bulletin board, but a freaking cork board on the wall with notes pinned to it. There are events, there are book signings, there are discussions, there are meetings. Now in the world of COVID that we're currently living in, a little more limited. There's still a hub though. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, any thoughts on all that before we move? Go ahead, Aaron. Well, I mean, you can also look for the virtual bulletin boards and things like that. Uh, Friggin' Reddit is one of the big places that I kind of leaned into. Uh, your writing prompts and stuff like that. Um, I did a lot of my uh, uh, my 10,000 hours in there. Um, earned my friggin' spotlight badge and stuff like that. Uh, I have, I've got one YouTube friggin' thing where somebody took one of my writing prompts um, about Walt Disney was cryogenically frozen and came back. Uh, somebody took what I wrote and ran an audio file and basically wrote it mm. there on a YouTube video. And it was basically, where's my Scrooge McDuck money vault? In Walt Disney's voice. Mm. Um, but I've got dozens of writing prompts in there thousands of reddit karma uh, running in the background over there and it's one of those that you get a lot of good feedback um, a lot of ways to improve your dialogue how is the support <clears throat> and feedback in general on reddit is it very negative and aggressive and attacking or is it very supportive it is it is community to community in the writing prompt side um, it is good um in other places, it is horrible. It is a cesspool. Uh, in writing prompt, you've got to get in there on the right prompt at the right time. But for the most part, it is very positive. Um, if they like your stuff, you get positive feedback. If you, there, for the most part, there's no negative feedback. It's just that you just go unseen, um, which is a positive thing. Whereas in other places, you are just friggin' downvoted to hell or um they hate you um but it it's either all positive or nothing on the writing prompt side is a, one way to say that but right. there are other select communities um uh, what is it um no sleep uh is another one where you've got kind of a shared world community just talking about things keeping them awake at night you've got have we met which is this virtual town of uh lower duck pond where everybody kind of knows each other through the community bulletin board of a fictional town um real quick to ginter in chat here says the hfy community which i don't know what that means but the hfy community is great but its sister site is poison. It all depends on who's moderating it. Yes, moderators are key. Uh, I, I but like 85% of the communities are moderated by three people. Right. I think that's key to um, any large group, large being more than, let's say, five or ten people. Um, <laughs> okay. By the way, we have learned... HFY community on Reddit. I've never been on Reddit. I have no clue. Stands for humans. Fuck yeah. So there we go. Mm -hmm. um, something I don't think I've ever said. Ever. Those three <laughs> words have never been put in that specific sequence that came out of my mouth before this moment. <laughs> um, Very cool. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, go on. But uh, I, I did that, and when I was writing uh, Persona Non Grata, friggin', I wrote that kind of in a vacuum. I had a couple key support. Uh, I was actually using um, uh, rally points, uh, military-based kind of community, and I had a couple people that did uh, advanced readers for me, uh, oh, nice. pre-beta, alpha reading. Right. Um, they did it because it's nominally military sci-fi. Once I got through that first stage, I looked for beta readers. Um, I used Goodreads uh, and a couple other places to find those. Once I got past the beta reader stage, I ended up meeting um, a buddy of mine uh, by the name of Kevin, and he linked me up with um, the writer of uh, Kevin Berger. Kevin mm -hmm. Berger, he's published. He's got five books out. You can find him on Amazon. Great guy. Um, he read mine. He actually did my cover. Um, he did it, and that's kind of that writer support group. And as I said, we shouldn't be rivals. Um, and he kind of said, okay, hey, here's some tips and things like that, and I've carried that through. But there are times, speaking of rivals in reference to that, where I will read other writers and just be like, God, I hate them because they write so well. I will never be that good. And then there are oh. other ones that are on their 18th book. I'm speaking of somebody who I just read recently. And I'm just like, oh, can I call them and clue them in? Because they need to fix some shit. Mm -hmm. Now, shifting... The does, it, does it work for them? This was not working. <laughs> and I read the reviews and people... I didn't even read the reviews till I was like two-thirds through the book. And I actually put it down at two-thirds of the book. I loved their concept and their science. Their characters and their storyline was so crap. Um, well, the, the Rama books, I couldn't make it pay, past page three, but some people love that friggin' hard sci-fi. Sci I'm like, which ah, one I couldn't get Rama? Uh, what was it? I can actually tell you in just one second. Okay, you look that up. But this but, is uh, 80s. Uh, but then again, I tried to read The Witcher, and I tried to read a few other very popular books, and I went, ugh. Yeah. How'd this hit that level? Oh, Arthur C. Clarke. Ah, well, yeah. it's. Uh, I've read some of his, uh, you know, Space Odyssey and whatnot, and I was still confused how people loved him. And I think that was just the era where there wasn't much else out there. Uh, yeah, I think there was a lot of mushrooms out there. Yeah, it might have been it, too. There was a certain... Okay, let's talk about NaNoWriMo. Now, for those of you that yes. don't know, NaNoWriMo is four words crushed together. National Novel Writing Month. It is Oh, November. shit, that's what that means? <laughs> Holy fuck. You didn't know? No, 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 I thought it was NaNoBots unite against the Autobots. <laughs> oh, it could be. It's, uh... And to Ginger, I will read your comment in a moment here. But with NaNoWriMo, there's a website for it. I think it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, NaNoWriMo.org. I'm going to go double check that before I. Uh, oh. Yeah, NaNoWriMo.org. N A N O. Not National Alliance Against the Rhinos. Hold on. Good. NaNoWriMo, N A N O W R I M O.org. And you guys can go find me on that and be my buddy if you want. That's what they call them there. But uh, this is an organization that originally came together to encourage people to write novels, write 50,000 words during the month of November. Um, doesn't matter what they are. Don't edit it. Don't worry about the story. That will all come later. Just write it because it's a good start to a novel. Now, they have further things since then. Uh, NaNoWriMo camp during the summer, all kinds of events throughout mm -hmm. the year. They've really grown and expanded. But this is something, if you're new to writing, to get into this support. And I do it on my Twitch channel, not because I need it, because I'm writing consistently throughout the year, but for the other folks who come to the channel to see people doing what they want to do, I wanted to be there for that part of the community. Because I will always need that support, that advice, that reinforcement from others, whether they're more or less experienced than me. I go to Aaron with things. He has one book out working on a second. I go to Michael. Michael is more than 20 years my junior. But 
he has certain things of value that I can learn from him. And this is my philosophy. I can always learn something from everybody. Now, flipping that, that means there's pretty damn good chance I can also give somebody else something in return. And that's what I'm doing with NaNoWriMo. Michael, have you ever participated in NaNoWriMo? I've never participated. I know a lot of friends who have uh, started their books with that, and it's a really good motivator uh, to like jump into the game. Um, but similar to you, like I've always had like a project already going on, you know. And I was like, I, I I've never even gone on the website, so I, so I don't even know if it would be cheating to be like halfway through a book and then. But uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting concept. And I think that what this speaks to in terms of support, you know, not only do you get to meet people, and there's lots of value in that, like we, talk, like we talked about in the first half hour, but um, it's almost like a way for you to support your future self. Mm -hmm. So it's like your past self doing your future self a favor. And uh, to quote the great Aaron Kennedy, uh, this is a business. And um, this, starts, this, this uh, helps you create a schedule. It helps you create uh, goals and milestones That's that you right. can reach. Yeah. And, and so uh, mm -hmm. when I mentioned groups earlier and searching for them in social media, NaNoWriMo has that built in. It has, you can search by your geographic location and other terms to find people close to you because they would actually get together and do writing things. Which, by the way, let me, uh, I want to ping Aaron in a moment here, but to Jinter, just said the biggest thing was the writer meetups, which is what I was just talking about, which was Very set cool. a time and place for people to meet and write together. It is limited this year with COVID, but it was a great thing that I was just about to mention. His earlier comment, by the way, jumping back a little, I've never really understood the I won't help you because we write in the same genre idea. Your readers and my readers can be the same, and they want the genre, so let's work together to make it bigger for everyone. A rising yeah. tide lifts all ships. This is what we were saying in the beginning of the show. Aaron's Perfect. flashing thumbs up. Michael's nodding. So, Aaron, I know you've never even really... Uh, well, no, and uh, I thought um, back on it. I'm like, a couple years back, freaking uh, not knowing the term or freaking putting the term together, I was doing the uh, pretty much one of those daily tasks and read it, writing a 500 words here, 500 words there, 1,000 words, whatever, to try to do that. I don't think I actually succeeded in the goal, but I believe I was participating in it. There you go. And uh, that's what I was about to ping Aaron for. Aaron is big on, on beating the drum of build the habit. It takes this long to create a habit. That's what NaNoWriMo does or attempts to do for a lot of mm -hmm. folks. Yeah, flex the muscle, situate your mind toward uh, creation. Mm -hmm. And that is invaluable. <clears throat> okay, so we're about halfway through at this point in time, and we've kind of hit the major point. Let's break down some uh, smaller points or run around on tangents. So when seeking out people to get your support, gentlemen, yes, Aaron? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, like, because I haven't actually said it today, but both of you have. <laughs> we're, we're eclipsing your catchphrase. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's a business, okay? When hiring somebody for a business, look for people who have skills you don't, okay? So if you're great at the numbers thing but not great at the words thing, find somebody who has that skill. Yeah. Okay. Because, hey, let's say there are two of you guys. All right. And you're really good at one thing, or you're both really good at the same thing. One of you is going to do it a lot, and the other one is going to freaking slowly lose that skill. It's going to atrophy. Okay. But, oh, freaking, I lost. I haven't freaking done such and such in years. It's going to atrophy. So find somebody who's really good at that. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm not good at math. Freaking. I'm going to hire somebody who's good at math because I don't do it all that often. Uh, look for guy, look for people like that. So when you're building a support network, find people that are good at the things that you're not or people mm -hmm. that are going to hold your feet to the fire on the things that, that are good at that you're not. 
Or if you want to learn a skill, oh, I was talking about this earlier today. I'm a shit welder. <laughs> but I am. I'm how do you, good at all. How do you get them to, uh, to stick together? Well, no. <laughs> Strangely enough, next door to one of, one of my many places of employment, guy came in. He's like, hey, you got a lighter. I'm like, no, I don't smoke. Um, uh, and my boss quit two years ago. He's like, damn, I got to start uh, light this forge. I'm like, forge? He's like, yeah, we we got this foundry next door. I'm like, you got a foundry? I'm like, wait, wait, wait a second, wait a second. My tool bag outside. Let me go grab you a lighter. Run outside. They've got a full-on metalworks in the place next door. He's like, yeah, we got all kinds of stuff. We're making knives. We're making friggin' spits. We're doing all this. We got welding machines. I'm like, you got welding machines? Yeah, we're freaking this nonprofit. It's free for veterans. I happen to be a veteran. Cool. It's all free for you. Friggin' bring your wife by too. I'm like, she's a veteran too. You ever seen that show where they create the weapons from like yes. books and movies? Yes, it's like that. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. And right. About multimedia and extending the story. Now, if you that's haven't, pretty sweet. if you haven't brought Monica around yet, I will be happy to be your wife and go in with you. <laughs> Look, don't tell. Uh, don't ask. Don't tell. Ended years ago, sir. Okay. I don't know if that means we I can go judge. with you or not. <laughs> <laughs> Just put on the ears and come on in. <laughs> put on the ears. Don't ask questions. You, you know, a frustrating point for me when offering support to people is yeah. the people that come to you for support and encouragement and they throw their ideas and you're like, great, do that. Go ahead. Here's an idea. And you do what support structures do. And then they totally ignore you and say, next time they see you, they're like, oh, and they repeat exactly what they said before. But maybe it's a different idea or whatever. So they're never actually doing. They're just coming to you to soak up that attention. And eventually I want to be like, stop talking and go somewhere else. Because you're <laughs> be not gone. actually here to accomplish <laughs> anything. I'm a Grinch in this sense. If you want to do things, I'm going to support you. If you want to come here to waste my time... And just soak up my attention when I have things I could be doing. <laughs> yeah, you're you're toxic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So my point with that being is, if you're going to other people to support and you're asking them how to do things, maybe you should listen and then yeah, follow yeah. through. Otherwise, stop asking. Um, sir, yeah. I, I've got to point something out. I don't think you understand how people work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do, and that's why I find him annoying. Mm. <laughs> and there is, uh, speaking of some of the folks we mentioned earlier in the uh, show, uh, John of Conquest Publishing just popped hey. up in chat. Good Hi, to see John. You. What's up, John? He says, stay a while and listen. That is true. It's good, it's good to listen. Absorb. To think it over. Her. Yeah, do you want to Fine. read uh, what Tajinter said there, Michael? Sure, let me see. Tajinter, the other side is the people that ask, in all capitals, for advice, and then do exactly the opposite. <laughs> yeah. They don't want your advice. They want to hear their decisions from your mouth. Yeah, that's, um, they want to confirm what they were already imagining in their own mind. That's, uh, that's, a, that's, a, true, that's a true statement. But uh, no. Here's what you do. You say, hey, I want you to take a coin, all right? Say, hey, heads, I'm going to do such and such. Tails, I'm going to do such and such. Flip the coin, mm -hmm. and then fucking ignore it, okay? <laughs> which, one did, which one did you fucking hope was going to happen when you flipped the coin? <laughs> That's all you need to do. Yeah, which, but I had three one, choices. It doesn't... Yeah, which one would have been disappointing? Don't do that <laughs> Right! One. Yeah. Right! Yeah. It's if whole... you have to talk yourself into something, it's a bad idea. Right. It's the whole Marie, well, what's her name, with the uh, what keep what brings you joy. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's good. By the way, Aaron, as you're doing the coin thing, I was imagining you as Harvey Dent for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Pick a side. <laughs> look, look, just because I got a fucked up eye, you can't be bringing that up all the damn oh, time. Oh, no, man. I... <laughs> it's the third eye that's the problem, sir. Oh, um, which um, 
Uh, now that'll be an off-topic thing. I'll talk to you guys about that between things. Oh, uh, remind remind me to do the Ed O'Neill uh, one-eyed monster thing for you. <laughs> Does this involve a lack of pants? No, no, no. It, it it is family safe. It is family safe. Um. See, I thought you were gonna say, take a coin, flip it, then shove it up your. But you didn't go there. I was watching the same thing. I was on the same wavelength. That, that... When have I not been family safe on this show? But that, but that pause, though, you, you, that was expert <laughs> delivery still. That's why right. I was transported to some Christopher Nolan movie. <laughs> Tijinter says, I flipped a coin and landed on do not set it on fire, but I wanted to set it on fire. Oh, then why no. were you flipping a coin? <laughs> it's a... Uh... Just like if you have, like I do, Set the coin on fire. if you're anything like me and you have 20 ideas or 12 ideas or even just two ideas or 2,000 ideas, one of those is going to, uh-oh, I feel like I'm speaking directly to one of our viewers that has a poll out for what he should write for NaNoWriMo, and there is literally, how many choices are on there, 30? And I'm like, oh my God, narrow it down for me, I don't even know what to click. Um, you now know, Rymo's twenty five percent over. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about having uh, a lot of choices. It's the it's the paralysis of choice. It's the it's the it is. it's the it can be it can it can freeze you up. Have two projects, okay? Yeah. When when you can't work on one, work on the other. When you're done working on that one, work on the first. Two choices only. I think that's a good idea, and that's something that you know. And this is this isn't exactly on topic, but it, it's tangential because we talk about you know uh, self support and, and scheduling. But but I want to have like I always want to have one illustration project and one writing project, and uh, have like at least and whatever the side project is, do that once a week, and then the rest of the week will be the writing. Oh, you said side project, not so side lady. Okay. <laughs> Which, actually, that's a fair point. And by the way, when you finish the first project and only the second remains, then you pull in the third project and you still only have two. There you right. go. Well, well, okay, so this is, a, this is a management thing that I've been doing for years, okay? Mm -hmm. Whenever I've had an employee, I will assign him a task. I say, hey, this is your primary task, and when you are done with that, begin this task. When I see him working on the second task, I will assign him his next task. That way he is always busy. He's never without a task. Right. Uh, now, if I see him doing nothing, I'm going to go, hey, are both of those tasks done? Well, no, no, I've still got such and such to do. What the hell? <laughs> I gave you two tasks. Why are you not working on either of them? You're a screw-up. By the way. Pick a side of the coin. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Shove it up your no. <laughs> Coin a phrase or uh, to flip back all kinds of coin puns right there to Ginter also flip back to the other topic about the coin saying because then I could blame it on the coin and that is a fair point if ah, you yeah. won't decide not can't but because you're stuck on choices but if you won't decide you are looking to have somebody else to blame you are looking mm -hmm. to not have responsibility for your own success or failure and perhaps because you're... In, Go ahead, Aaron. Internalize, not externalize. Mm. You want to expand on that a little? You're responsible for your own friggin' decisions. <laughs> Man, I, I love boss Aaron. This is, <laughs> this is great. It's a friggin' business. It's a business. You, you are responsible for what you do and do not do. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying you're responsible for all of your success, <laughs> but what you do or and failure. what you do not do, you are friggin' responsible for. What you yeah. are responsible for is the initial choice. It's it's, it's it, and and having and having a mindset that that aligns you toward the nourishment of your passion. But, okay, no, no. Here, here's here's a question. Okay, mm -hmm. how many characters did you put on the page? Not how many words. How many characters did you hit the tab or the space bar today? Hmm. I'm asking you a question, Michael. <laughs> did, did you did you hit did you hit the space bar? Oh Hells. my god! The pressure. 
Tab. Did you hit tab? <laughs> uh, uh, did you hear the word? Did you open word? They, they don't sell word. tab anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, oh boy. <laughs> by the way, um, going. God, I lost my train of thought because Aaron was a fucking pit bull over here. Part of my language. <laughs> Sorry, my, my my throat still hurts when you from when you reach to the screen and strangle me. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it's something I said the other day that is an age-old turn of phrase that we've all heard in one form or another. Pull your head out of your ass? No. You succeed <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. by failing multiple times. Yes. And you cannot I'm succeed. I'm a 40-year-old man. You can only fail up. <laughs> fail up. <laughs> You're a little more than 40, my friend. But anyhow. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> not me. Um... Ah, uh, right. Um, hold on. Trying to gain my thought back. <laughs> we have angry It's Aaron mine tonight. now, sir. <laughs> He's so adorable at this age. Look at him. <laughs> um, but this is a. I'll, I'll say while while you're thinking, this is a great uh, mindset to apply to yourself. To look at yourself in the mirror and and say, you know, and and ask yourself those hard questions and 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 have those. Uh, that, that support for your future self because you 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 sacrifice a little bit of uh, a little bit of time a little bit of like okay I'm gonna snap into it I'm gonna go into business mode now and then your future self no gets to no it. not now friggin last week did I go into business mode last fucking week <laughs> all the <What>? time <laughs> right but I'm it's it's I... an ongoing thing so you, so ideally you're always a little bit of ahead. No, but it is true. The only time you could do something is now. Whether you mm -hmm. started that yeah. project last week or next week, you can only do what you're doing right this moment. So you That's can right. plan for well, the I'm, future, but you're not doing I'm, it until you're doing it. Well, I'm going to point this out, okay? When was the best time to grow a tree? 20 fucking years ago. <laughs> God. I am so glad I put that adult language disclaimer at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> Aaron's hot. Aaron's hot I am. I am. Well, no, no, it, don't get me wrong, okay? Yes. <laughs> you're writing a book, right? When you're writing a book, you're making no money, okay? You're making money on the books you wrote. Right, yeah. Unless it's, it's like your building, first book. It's like building a ship, yeah. And by the way, to Ginter said a couple good things here. He says, you're responsible for your response to the situations that have come up. And then in response to the tree thing, he says, but it's still worth it to plant a tree today. Oh, absolutely. It, it is absolutely worthwhile to do things today, but the payoff is tomorrow. Here, here's, mm. we're, we're, if, I can, today, if I can, if I can put tomorrow. some, what's that, Michael? Mr. Crab. <laughs> I just I just did a SpongeBob quote. <laughs> what if is today, I can, but yesterday's uh, tomorrow. Shove some words into Aaron's mouth here. Something you learn as you get older, and by the way, you don't have to be much older. You could be thirteen and have this lesson pop into your world. Or shove the, it into your <laughs> the stuff you could have done because you knew it was there and you wanted to do it in the past, whether that's yesterday or twenty years ago or whatever is what you'll regret today. So do it today. That way tomorrow or next week or next year, you have that behind you. There is no reason to wait and put it off. And indecision is often just an excuse. If you have multiple projects, you know what? Pick one, start one. If you're not sure which one you write, want to write or create, start creating them all. And see which one sticks with you. <laughs> Tijinter says flip a coin. You know what? We, we heard what we can do with that coin. Besides set it on fire. <laughs> Light it on fire. I'm Show us somebody's ass. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, uh, and this is writer support. This is... <laughs> Aaron's playing bad cop. We're playing good cop. <laughs> no! no look, 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 I'm playing real cop. Okay. Which, which is what people call bad I cop. The law. <laughs> He's just Judge Dredd of writing look. support. <laughs> hey, look, Judge Dredd never did anything bad to anybody. He merely told him, these are the consequences of your actions. You did this. Or inaction. And this is what the law... Oh, 
or inactions. Why'd you do this? He didn't actually, he didn't care why you did it. Hey, this is the law. This is what happens. Ta da. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. points where he gave people choice. And everybody, every day, has that choice. Are you going to do it or not? <laughs> to Ginger points out, playing a cop is actually a crime. Okay. <laughs> and the interesting thing about um, about making that making that choice, and it is a hard choice because uh, we are, I think, wired to um, to go for like immediate, um, like like the the immediate thing, and and writing a book, immediate gratification. Thank you. I was searching for that word. And writing a book is a, a long term project, so. Do you want to yeah. finish your thought? Then I have a thought after that. Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Inject. Here's what I'll tell you about that. Yes, it is. And that's hard. Mm -hmm. But stop looking at the finish line. Mm -hmm. Stop yeah, that's looking exactly right. at the end result. Look at this sentence, this paragraph, this page, and then do the next one and do the next one. Aaron, you run marathons. You know staring at the finish line when you're at the start line is a way to fail. But looking at getting to that next corner or that next turn or to that one person in front of you. What's he holding up? There we go. There's one of he's his medals. He's holding up his medals. <laughs> Soon there will be nothing but medals and no air. He's going to be covered. He's going to be like he's going to be like the cousin it of medals. He's just going to be like a <laughs> clanging rattling mat. <laughs> he has just held oh, up no, like no, on five different medals. They look good, man. That's some bling. That... There we go. But the point is, you don't get anywhere without moving forward. You never finish something without starting it and then continuing it. Right. Ah, see, Tajinter also points out it's also... Complaining or worrying is like, a, is like a rocking chair, you know? It takes a lot of energy, but you don't move anywhere. That's true. And Tajinter mm -hmm. says something similar. It's also the frog in the pot syndrome. If you're okay today, then you'll be okay tomorrow, so you don't have to make the effort today. No, make the effort today. This is how you succeed. This is how you move forward. And maybe you will fail, but you'll learn something. And the next mm -hmm. time, you'll do it a little different, a little better. And also, a lot of times, especially when it comes to any kind of creative project, a lot of right time, right place does play a factor. I have written yeah. over two dozen books, but I am not rich and famous and well-known and succeeding off my writing, but I won't quit because I enjoy what I'm doing, and I'm going to keep what, going. Uh, yes, sir? Well, on that note, Travis, mm -hmm. friggin', we're part of your support network. Yes, you right? These are, are things that we talk about, these things that we talk about online, offline, um, as a variety of subjects, but... With that support network, you've adjusted your business practices mm -hmm. to make yourself more efficient and effective in your writing style. Yeah. Um, and this goes I, back to learning something from everybody. Aaron has one book, but I go to him for business advice. Michael might be younger than me, but I go to him for business advice because they both have different experiences in their life that I can draw from that is worth hearing. And in return, I've given back to them. And, and that's the exchange, and that's the beauty thing. And if somebody's on their first book, haven't even finished it, but they offer you some advice, it's worth considering. First, mm -hmm. for yourself and what you can get from it. Second, if you can help them build on that. So Yeah, and you make friends. Well, there's that too. <laughs> then there's a lot of <laughs> love and hugs. Yeah. No, uh, uh, there's a great quote uh from somebody, and I wish I could remember who it was. If you ever ask Whoopi Goldberg or uh, rest his soul, Robin Williams, who's the funniest person you, you ever met, they're not going to name some big league celebrity or anything like that. They're going to name some nobody you've never heard of. Their you're uncle gonna, gonna, or their the grandfather. Or, or some, some hack they did three stand-ups with in a club in 1963, and they're going to go, oh, yeah. He's Ed, friggin' such and such. Who the hell is that? I don't know, but he's friggin' selling cars and friggin' such and such now. 
he bombed one night and just quit. Mm. Um, and then you're going to go, what? Oh, yeah, no, funniest guy I ever met. He just had one bad night. He just gave it all up. And we all <laughs> have those yeah. nights, guys. We all have yeah. those nights where we're just ready to quit because we haven't hit that level of sex. And by the way, there are perfectly super famous, successful people that have those nights where they're ready to give it up because they had one bad night, one bad review, one person on the street say something shitty to them. We mm -hmm. all have uh, those Joan, nights. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Joan Rivers made the comment of um, why she stuck with comedy. Uh, she's like, it was easy. All the other things that she tried before, yeah, it was hard. Qu quit it. Moved on to the next thing. Hard. Quit it. And when she got to comedy, it was the easiest thing she ever did and just kept doing it over and over again. And she just was successful at it. Now, don't get me wrong. It was incrementally harder, but it was still the easiest thing she ever did up to that point. She Michael? quit everything that was ever hard for her. Yeah, uh, it's made me think about uh, this post that um, one of our colleagues, Tempe Wade, uh, put on Instagram, and it was, and she had shared it, and it was a post that said, uh, "You have no idea how many people are reading your book right now, or thinking your, thinking about your characters, or how often that when they think about uh, your stories, uh, how excited they get, and, and uh, how much it makes them smile." And I, I was just, I was looking at that post and it, and it just made me smile. So Tempe, if you're listening, that post made me smile and uh, it, it's inspiring. And um, everything affects everything. Everyone is a supporting character, to use writing terms, in some someone else's life. And so it's neat. It's Very neat. Good. And it, and it's good to it's good to remember that at some point. And with all the books that you that you know each of us has sold. You know, just imagine it's like it, it's somewhere out where out there. It's somewhere sitting on someone's nightstand, and it's in people's minds. It's cool. Couple comments here. Flipping back, <laughs> in immediate response to what you just said, to Ginger says, "Oh God, I'm an NPC." <laughs> <laughs> it's true. In everybody else's life, you're an NPC. To Ginger, <laughs> uh, a few minutes ago, five minutes ago, said, "And you don't have to do it all today. A journey of a thousand miles." A book of 50,000 words is written one word at a time. John yeah. of Conquest Publishing says, I'm on my 174th partial book. Mm -hmm. And in reference to having that one bad day, Tejinter said words of wisdom here, and that's what a support network can help with. Then he added, or you can flip a coin, either works. Um, so <laughs> there's that. We're in the last five minutes here. Uh, any closing thoughts on the topic of writer support? Uh, tune into this show where we will continue to build an, an amazing, illustrious network of the best minds and the best readers. <laughs> right night on Twitch TV and all your and wherever quality podcasts are listened to. <laughs> Aaron, anything? Well, we've got these coins, okay? And sometimes you need to flip them. <laughs> I love the coin joke this episode. <laughs> okay. What joke? <laughs> what okay. fucking joke? <laughs> now, my closing thoughts is uh, if you're brand new to writing, try NaNoWriMo just to build the habit. Mm. And that's the key is building that habit. If it's not November, don't wait for November. Start now. It's 1,667 words a day. Write it. Or write 500 a day. Or write 5,000. Write what you can write. Set a schedule. Make it a habit. And then reach out to people. Well, you can reach out before. You can reach out after. But reach out to people around you. And uh, put on your big pants. And be re don't have a thin skin. Because I've offered criticism in support. And had people go, that's great. And I've had other people who can't take it at all. Writing is a solo activity. It is not a solo career. It is a career full of other people. Um, by the way, to Ginter, I'm sorry, I didn't ever read the comment, but it's kind of saying what I'm saying. Being able to take constructive criticism. There are some times when your work needs more work. Don't take it personal unless if its intent is to be personal. And by the way, if you are offering criticism to somebody... <clears throat> Don't just say, it's great, or it's bad. Have 
reasons behind both those statements. Show them their strengths, show them their weaknesses, and then if you receive that criticism from somebody, get it again from somebody else. As Aaron has pointed out previously, if one person says it and one other person agrees with it, even if it's yourself, it's something to look at. <clears throat> but if only one person is saying it, <clears throat> and don't take yourself too seriously, says so Stadinter, the adventures of Captain McHowls and the werewolf submarine captain trying to save the moon, I know people that would love that idea. That is actually an awesome idea and sounds like a fun book. Now, let's do our <coughs> closing stuff. Don't forget, if you have thoughts or comments on this episode, whether you've caught us live or caught us in the podcast 10 years from now, you can send us an email at rightnightshow at gmail.com. That's W R I T E. N-I-G-H-T, show at gmail.com. And also, I want to drop birthday wishes right now. I myself Ooh. have a birthday here in the month of November. So anybody else that has a birthday, let us know so we can wish you well wishes for it. Or uh, blow out the candles on your cake before you do, like that little girl in the video that we've all seen recently. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it. Apparently, Is that the one that lit herself on fire? Uh, no, that's the one that beat up the little girl next to her for doing it. Um, that's the one where oh. they lit the coin on fire. Oh, you watched much more violent ones than I did. <laughs> I didn't watch them. Anyhow, um, I want to thank everybody for your support. Today alone, we have had multiple follows, multiple subscriptions. Um, thank you to Jonathan Madhawk, who through his subscription in today, Bode Godzilla, who Yay. is a well-known and well-versed writer, um, who, by the way, hold on, let me do a quick shout-out for Eric there. I think that's a command for him. There we go, Eric Ugland. You can find him on Amazon. Thank you for everybody who threw bits, subs, hosts, raids, purchased merchandise, and our friends on Patreon. Like Spacey Tracy right there. Thank you for your bits. Much appreciated. Every bit helps the show. But the folks like Triple U and Ethan Strauss who support us on Patreon and Berta and Musical Wizardry who support us on PayPal every single month for a long time now. Here's to you guys. We're going to do some outro music and uh, we will catch you on the next show. <laughs> Thank you for joining author Travis I. Sivart and the other writers, content creators, and all-around amazing people for our discussion here on Night. Join us again soon, and until you do, make sure you create with passion, enjoy the journey, and remember, every night can be right now.